Hi, I'm Lana Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak. Thanks for being here to watch tonight. Um, today we're going to be talking to Nicole Landon Hughes, who is a painter and a photographer and um, is always exploring and uh, seems to be creating new works and new mediums all the time. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Lana. Hi, thanks for coming tonight. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Yeah, so, um, Nicole, you got your, your start in the fashion business. I did. That's right out of uh, college. I went right into the fashion industry and was there for about 25 years. Uh, so it really um, fueled a lot of creativity um, in my life. I bet it did, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and you kind of are phasing that out now? Is, is that...? Well, um, I think um, business got a little bit tough, as, as we all know it did, and uh, the business started to change. It started to, I guess I could even say, not be so fun. Yeah. Um, so I did definitely start to phase out of it. I am still involved in fashion. What I do now is I work directly with the manufacturers overseas. Um, so I'm still involved with everything that I do love. I, I love fashion. It's, it's part of who I am. Um, but it's at a very different level. Um, I still get involved in the clothing and the design, um, but at a um, probably uh, a final level where we've already got the orders, we've already got um, commitments to it, and now I just need to produce the goods. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So where, where you go to China, you mentioned to me, you. Um, spend a lot of time in China or you go there to work and how does that work out? I do. Um, I, uh, the factory that I work for where we actually do our production is uh, located in Changshu, China, which is just right out of Shanghai. Um, so I go there, I usually host um, our clients, any of the clients. Most of my clients are obviously in the United States. Um, but when they do take their trips out to see our factories, the mills, the dye houses, those types of things, I will escort them um, so they can, you know, have a, a partner. And I, um, yeah, so I, I'm there very often. Yeah, that must be so interesting. It is. Yeah. It is. It's lovely, and I've been doing it for some time. Even prior to that, I used to travel to Hong Kong and, and different uh, places overseas. But um, I. After my children, because I've got two kids, got a little bit older and I was able to leave them and not feel so badly that I've left them, um, I was able to really extend my um, travel time there. And that's uh, really when I started to enjoy my camera. And that was kind of the start of, of this art that I do. Um, so I, if I was there in Shanghai, I would stay another two days and I would explore um, all through um, Shanghai. Um, I'll go to Beijing um, for a few days, I uh, went to the Great Wall, um, just all sorts of places and was able to take some fantastic pictures. Um, I always say that my photos Tell, tell my story, tell my story of the universe in front of me. Mm -hmm. I love the photos that mm -hmm. uh, you showed me of China. Thank you. Um, the Great Wall is, is just Yeah, beyond. that was that was wild. It yeah. never sh snows in Beijing. It never snows. Maybe twice a year it snows. And I was lucky enough to have been hosted by one of my clients' um, aunts. Otherwise, I would have never gotten to the wall because they, the, the drivers, you can hire a driver, um, but they would have never taken me up to the wall. I was literally the only person on that wall. I spent four or five hours walking that wow. wall in a snowstorm. Um, I didn't give you um, one of them, but I have one in particular um, image, which is hysterical because I made a snowball and I put the snowball, <laughs> I took a picture, focused on that snowball, but right behind it was the Great Wall yeah. of China, which is just, you know, Breathtaking. Not a lot of people get to do that. No, that's very true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And, and you see, you have pictures of the city streets with a lot of people in them. And, and yes, I love to to take pictures culture. of of people. I will tell you, in China, it's a little bit more difficult. Women, in particular, don't like that. You, so you got to kind of be respectful and and you know, make sure that they're up to it. Um, I was able to spend. I don't remember if I had sent you some pictures, but. Um, uh, Team and Square and the Forbidden City. That was breathtaking. Really? Yeah, I think one of the images that I sent to you um, uh, was such a famous. Um, it was the uh, Gate of Heavenly. Um, w with the red gate. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so just lovely. And I'm, I enjoy my photographs not only um, because of the technical part of it, but because of the stories that it tells. And, and people love to look at it for that reason, but I love it because it tells the story of where I've been, where my life has taken me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of funny because my house has pictures everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's what happens when yeah. you're an artist or yes, a photographer. Exactly. You have it's either art or stuff. it's photographs all over. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so, so the, did the photography come before the painting? Photography came before the painting, mm -hmm. yes. I, I, while I was photographing, I did have what I called a cave. It was my um, quiet place uh, where I used to go. I used to dabble in chalk and pencils, and, and I did do, I started out um, doing human forms. I used to do um, live sessions in chalks, and then I did a little bit of oils. I dabbled in faces and eyes. I always used to love, you know, more because, you know, they always say eye is the uh, window to your soul. Um, so I always really enjoyed trying to, to do that. Um, but then I started to uh, work in um, acrylics. I said, let me try acrylics. And I actually loved the acrylics. I don't have a, um, I'm a self-taught artist, so um, I played around and I yeah. experimented. And with oils, you don't really experiment. You are very committed to that stroke that you did. Um, all of the friends that I that have been there with me when I do my art laugh because if I don't like a painting, the water comes out and there I go and I erase it. You can do that with acrylic. You yeah. have the ability to do that. Um, uh, with the oils, you can't. And, and once I really started to kind of feel um, uh, the acrylic, it just started to flow. I just loved it and I couldn't stop. So, um, you know, being in my cave was a place of refuge for me. It was a place of calm. It was um, a place for me to regroup. I did it usually after the kids were asleep. Mm -hmm. It was just for me. I'd put incense on and music on and I just let it all flow. And I didn't think about anything else. I just thought about what was in front of me. Um, and it became a passion. It not was just some place to rejuvenate, but it really truly became a passion for me. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. So, so for instance, this painting behind me, mm -hmm. this yellow painting, is an acrylic? That is an acrylic, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, and how is, I mean, do, what other mediums are you using right now? Um, I've ex I, I, my base um, is in acrylics, but what I've recently started to do is add some additional mediums to it. And it's kind of funny because I, I'm very much earthbound, meaning I like to recycle, I like to do what's good for the earth. So um, a lot of my pieces, not on the canvases, but the other pieces um, are done on uh, recycled or reclaimed woods. Uh -huh. um, if you notice the, the uh, black one with the purple, that's actually made out of eggshells. It's an eggshell vase, so I, I did hard-boiled eggs, I, you know, cracked uh -huh. them open and I glued them all on and then I painted and then I also used um, shoe polish to get the shadows on it um, and, you know, I'll, I'll use hot glue guns as well and make different um, textures to it. I use inks. Um, I've been doing a series of um, resin, which I'll talk about, but I do, the Tree of Life is a really important um, mm -hmm. thing for me. So I've been doing the series of resin with um, trees, but I use ink. Um, ink is very fluid, so it kind of flows and creates its own way, which is very, um, follows the, the Tree of Life yeah. philosophy. So um, yes, I like to incorporate new, those are the newer mediums that I've added to to my art. Yeah, that's pretty amazing what yeah. you said about the, those eggshells. Yeah. I just thought it was something that you had built up and, and yep. uh, no. yeah. Yeah, and doing the texture I'm uh, in my acrylics, none of these have it, but what I've started to use also is I don't just use a regular brush. I'll use different tools. I'll use spackle knives. I'll actually use spackle because I'm finding that people are really um, um, wanting texture these days. So I'll actually create um, a feel of the spackle uh -huh. compound, the spackle yeah. compound, 
and then I'll paint over it. And sometimes I'll paint twice over it and then I'll buff it so you can see the first color paint come out and then you still have the other one. So, you know, a lot of, someone had said, um, you know, do you name your pieces? You have intent of what the outcome of the piece is going to be. And I say never do um, because it just, I mean, some pieces actually have been done three different times. Um, and sometimes that's where I get the texture because there's right. so, so many layers <laughs> of paint. Um, but I also, it's hard for me, people always, you know, when you submit to galleries and, and the website that I have, um, I have to title the, these um, items. And I'm like, I, first off, I don't really like to title it only because um, I look to the viewer, it's their piece. It, and what do they perceive? What do they see? I, that's one of my favorite things about um, putting my art out in public more recently is that I love to listen to how people are um, perceiving the piece, like the yellow and gray piece. Um, a lot of people get that it's a sunset. Mm -hmm. um, I have another purple piece that has purples and dark blues and someone said it looks like a lake and it's a reflection and I have some white in it and they said and that's the moon. So I just enjoy yeah. just hearing what they see and I go, oh yeah. I did a, re a resin piece recently and um, someone said I see a dog's face in there and I said a dog's face and I looked and lo and behold there was a dog's face in there. Um, so sometimes I, you'll see, if you ever look on the website, you'll see sometimes it says untitled. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think that's okay too. Yeah, you know? I do too. Yeah. And, and I think that what you said about people um, bringing their own interpretation interpretation to yeah. it is, is um, a really important part of it, a piece of it. And yeah. um, I know that some artists don't really feel that way because they think, this is their work, yeah. and this is what it means, right. and this is what they did. But on the other hand, you know, if somebody sees something I've done and they have a different interpretation of it, I don't correct them. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't say, well, no, that's not what it no, is. I enjoy that. That's yeah. the, the most. Yeah. I, I, I don't like, I almost think that titles lead people, and art really yeah. is um, personal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very personal to the person viewing it. Right. Right, very much so. And and um, if they want to take it home and bring it in their house, yeah. you know, put it in the house, then they're seeing something different, whether not what I saw when I created it. Right. Yes, right. I, I had a um, some photographs that I had taken of a uh, fog, trees in the fog, oh, yeah. and somebody, and it was an open land behind it, and somebody said, who who bought it? said something about the water. And there was no water. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there okay, was no though. water there, but that was okay. <laughs> uh, um, one of the things that, that you brought to show us um, were pictures that you had um, taken of, of rooms with your paintings in them to show people what it looked like. I, I found that very interesting that you did that. Um, yeah, uh, you know, looking at the art, whether it be a website or on a wall um, at a gallery, that's fantastic. You can get a really nice up close um, look of it, but it's very difficult to envision it in a home. And I think that um, using that tool helps in sales um, to allow your client to see, well, that would really look great. Look how great it looks in their living room. It could look just as good in mine. Right. You know, right. so it's it's a nice way of doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. And putting two different paintings in, you know, the same scene, different paintings, yes. I, yep. I think makes a difference too because it really changes the mood. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the whole feeling of it. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So we're just about out of time, Nicole. Well, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, and it goes fast, too, yeah, doesn't it? it? Does. Surprisingly fast. It does. Um, so is there anything else you, you wanted to just quickly say before we wrap up? Um, 
No, I mean, I just, I, I love what I do. My art, as most artists' work is, it's part of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and my inspiration comes from the world in front of me. Um, all the people that I meet, all the things that I say, it's an amazing universe, and, and I like to express it through my, my art. Okay, great. Thanks yeah. so much. It was Thank great you, talking Anna. to you. Thank you, Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you could come today. <laughs> yeah, I know. That did go very fast. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Surprisingly fast. Yeah.